nasty. stand. Sean Halewood. Fine dining with British Airways. A little sprinkle of reverser just to um, finish it off. Just a little sprinkle, just a, you know, a pinch, a pinch. Crazy thing is that they give it large uh, overseas. Most of the time I've seen that, you know. We've got. Uh, have you got a dual arrival, Jilly? Looks like it. Is it busy in the holds? Landed on one engine. Wow. Inbound from Beijing. Did you say BA, yeah? Wow. Swiss 330? What from Zurich you mean? So let's have a little look out for this. Uh, well, we're not going to see it, are we? Here's that. Um, that's an interesting one, folks. Remember the other day when we were up on... on to... Okay, Chicago to Zurich. Okay. Remember the other day when we saw the um, the big row over on the on this remote stand, and I, 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 I made a point of how unusual it is to have the um, the Qantas 380 parked there. Now, obviously, they've got a technical issue. I'm going to guess um, with that 380, and I'm going to guess it's probably engine related. Um, Lloyd Bell, Swiss diverting to London Heathrow. Nick Hulse not 
often I do Wednesdays just having a few days off work something starting I think that's the yeah Singapore Airlines Trent 900's firing up Josephine thank you giving us the meta Malcolm Jeff has given a shout out to whomever gifted membership Thank you to them. Stuart Ross, 27 left landing will likely be a T4 arrival. Well, that was a BA jet, so yeah, it'll either be a T4 or uh, a, 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 it won't be a T4 arrival because that BA jet will be going to T5 or one of the satellites. Um, it does all depend. Really. Oh, that Qantas arrived this morning, did it? So they're parking up here now, are they? They've given up that spot the other end. Okay, so I'll take that all back. It's not a, um, a technical issue. Bless you. Well, it usually parks down there, doesn't it? Um, not seeing anything there at the moment. This looks like the space is blank. Hey, is that Iberia's A330? 350 even. Iberia's 350 in town doing a um, code share flight with BA by the looks of it. Paul, I do like the 777. Diane 78, Swiss 330 is now out of the hold. Sue Cowder, LA girl. Good morning, Rev H Diesel 13. BA 777, three minutes out, he's saying. Just had um, quite a sketchy landing from Isendez 737, which was quite interesting. A little bit of a sort of a... Uh, literally inches from, from wheels on ground to... Um, to um, OK, so that's the new... Well, I, I guess not new, but um, for the time being, looks like Qantas are going to be reserving that slot. Look at the tail just dwarfing the 350. I mean, that 350 is a big aeroplane, folks. It's crazy, isn't it? Dwarfing it. inbound just over London City Airport now Hearn Hunter has gifted a membership thank you sir or madam uh, Cheetah 1903 what is the satellite terminal or stand thing the satellite terminal or stand thing uh, which one are we talking about be a little bit more um Terminals two and three. Thank you, Hearn Hunter. in the Lurkers Lounge, Chad Hart, Mark B, Brian Panner. We, we've got somebody going out, haven't we, Jilly? One of our uh, one of our members or something like that. It's good looking, isn't it? Yeah. 
So not tie then. So Catherine's, Catherine's. Oh, he's on tie, right? Okay. Catherine's brother John flying back on Thai Airways at eleven fifty. Uh, and we've got Elliot Reed's dad apparently inbound. I think. Flint Hills Model Railway. Uh, so this is a diver, is it? This Swiss. Uh, 330. It's got to be pretty urgent, I've got to be honest with you, because um, let's face it, where was it? It was, it was only going to Zurich, so it's it's not that, it's only another 40 minutes in it. So su surprised they didn't go to Dublin or something like that. Or has it just gotten worse? Or is it just literally happened in the last, when did it start squawking? Or has it, is it not, it's not squawking, right. Oh, interesting. Very, very odd. Red Devil's livery. Um, I think that's being scrapped soon, isn't it, that aircraft? Tom Collins can't be too urgent as he's sat in the hold for a while. And uh, John H confirming did a couple of loops in the hold. Deborah Bell, good uh, morning to you. Yeah, in the time that it's been sort of like all the uh, doing all the um, holdings and stuff like that could have gone to Zurich. Oh, Catherine Malin, there we go. That's my brother going out on tie at 11.50. There we go. Well, we'll catch a glimpse of him, uh, Deborah. Yeah, it's still a good, that's a still a fair old delay, though. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Not with... Yes, yes, yes. Where are you going? I don't know. Martin Saxton read yesterday that Cathay might disappear and be integrated with... This is, it. This is Swiss Air now, isn't it? Where'd you go? Where'd you go? Where'd you go? Where'd you go? Oh, 
Oh, Jerry, come on, get your bleeding. Some days, just some days. Flip it, eh? did mention about duty time limitations so he might have been right on the cusp of it or they might have been right on the cusp of it eh? transport and Ken Ian Hannah Glenn's aviation love did speak to Nivedita Bashin, um, ex-Air India captain, and did ask her uh, So I'm guessing that they would have known about it and they would have brought a Swiss, a crew out to, um, to relieve this crew, I would imagine. I guess that also goes for, does it go for cabin crew as well? In terms of um, time, overrunning on time. And what's that about Cafe Pacific? Merging with or, 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 or being Yeah, somebody somebody mentioned about I've, I've lost the comment now about Virgin uh, Cafe Pacific being um, Integrated with another carrier or something Millie, thank you, gifted a membership. Thank you, Millie. And uh, Phil Skye's just gifted 10 memberships. Thank you, Phil. Uh, whoever that was just mentioned about um, Cafe Pacific. Can you repeat it, please? No way. Is it 10 days until... Oh, my God. Who? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That that's all. Oh, yeah, that what it shouldn't be a problem. You can't you do it now while we're on on, on air? Just send her a, t a text. Just t t tell her the dates that we're away, and then um, and then see what. To, so just make sure that she's around, and then we'll send her all the, the 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 you know. So let's see what they do with this jet, then, folks, because that's right at the end of the stands. Uh, I, obviously, the um, I'd imagine that the uh, the walkway is going to be um, attached. But the question is, is I doubt that they're going to be disembarking passengers, are they? Thank you, Brian. Brian Pound has gifted a membership. Very kind of you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, everybody who does that. Nah, this is a proper, uh, this is a proper, um, 
Nosy Parker moment, innit? Ooh, what's happening over there? They might just bring steps up, you know, and switch the crew around. Uh, they, they might do it that quick, because, you know, do they really need to use the... Um, Philip Jones has gifted five membership. Thank you, Philip. We believe, and um, you know, some some fair comments mentioning that it's possibly um, air crew. I would imagine. So the um, the walk bridge is being attached. It's quite interesting that it's all the way up there. I uh, would have thought it'd be like uh, L1, not L2. Lance D, how far is the flight from Heathrow to Zurich? It's not that far at all. 40 minutes, is it? Something like 40 minutes. E. Patterson, uh, Peterson, sorry. E. Peterson, thank you so much. Gifting five memberships. If it was air crew time, wouldn't they have just not flown at all? Um, well, it would have been based on them predicting their flying time, their flight time, and they probably, um, you know, they maybe thought, well, we can make it. Um, but this is literally a very last minute uh, deal, isn't it? We've got somebody going up the steps now. It's Steve, isn't it? Oh, Philip Jones, I've had a gifted membership in the past, so it's time to repay the gift. Thank you so much, Philip. What a wonderful gesture. Yeah, thank you, uh, Caroline. Just somebody mentioned it. So. How far are they going with this jet in terms of, uh, you know, um, obviously there's not going to be any baggage vehicles or anything like that. They're not uh, offloading anything from it or any body, I wouldn't have thought. See the trim stabiliser on the A330, one of the most identifiable features of the A330 is that big um, trim stabiliser uh, horizontal stabiliser uh, housing there which is very unique to the A330 Okay, that's interesting. Who? Uh, oh, okay. Kathy Williams. Flight time to London Heathrow to Zurich is about one hour and forty minutes. Okay, as they have to s time to serve a meal to passengers. One hour and forty. Really? Wow. Okay. Well, funky shot. Might get a funky shot. No. Nope. See, I'm going to be honest with you, folks. I do like that sort of like beige finish on the on the Air India jet. She looks great, doesn't she? Come on. I, and like I said, I spoke to Nivedita's, um, uh, Nivedita Bashin, uh, who we did a, an airside piece with um, Air India a few years back. And uh, apparently her son is still flying the 777 into London Heathrow. So who knows, we probably caught him a few times.
Lance D. Thank you. Gifted a membership. There goes the old um, the Red Devils. Love us triple seven. Okay, Nick Gray saying that the Swiss due to depart at 12.30. Well, it's an hour and wow, they're going to keep it here for an hour. Does that mean the passengers are... Uh, Question reholds. I've read about a point merge system. Point merge system for holding packs. Is this the one that is in use for Heathrow's four holds? Well, they come out. Sometimes they come out of one hold and go into another. Um, that's the only merge that I can think of. Can think of. What's that, GP? Oh, wow. Tom Collins saying that apparently in Chicago, the aircraft took over two hours to get from the gate to the runway. Obviously, not. yeah, that, that, that could well be fuel. Or could be f crew, yeah. I, I don't, I, to be honest with you, the contingencies that they have on fuel, I wouldn't have thought it would be fuel. Um, but, uh, but, but, but I, I can definitely think that that, that would maybe. But apparently, uh, by um, a pilot's discretion, captain's discretion, uh, they can run anything up to two hours above the allotted time um, before it. Before, but they have to make sure that they are um, fit to do so. If you see what I mean. Triple seven, Lenny, Chrissy, much prefer the new Air India livery. Well, there we go. Yeah, that's entirely up to you. I'm a, a sort of like old school person myself. I quite like old liveries. And uh, that one for me, I prefer it. At this point in time, I'll get used to the to the new livery. Don't get me wrong. I'll get used to it like I did with Lufthansa. I mean, um, but I still prefer the old Lufthansa livery. Give me an, an old Lufthansa livery over a new one any day. Um, and I will continue to say the same with Air India for the aforementioned future. Tornadoes at Chicago last year. So yeah, I'd imagine that that probably is. But why are they keeping it? If I, obviously it's because of slot time, isn't it? That's why they're putting it out at, at 12.30. Can't get her out any earlier. And of course, um, unfortunately, those passengers will be kept on that aeroplane. Uh, anybody who disembarks the aeroplane uh, will not be allowed back on um, and uh, may even and they will not get their baggage either until uh, at the other end. So you've got the choice if you want to. A bit like what happened with Virgin the other day when we were in um, in San Francisco, uh, when they were repairing the, um, putting some uh, stick, sticky back plastic on the wing <laughs> with some old toilet rolls and, um, and uh, some um, washing up bottles. <laughs> no, only joking. Um, but, um, and glitter, a little bit of glitter as well.
That's some well, very, very upset passengers on that jet plane there. Uh, yeah, it, San Fran, we were given the option if you want to leave the aeroplane, but US law states if you leave the aeroplane, you cannot get back on and uh, you will also not be able to get your baggage or highly unlikely anyway. Uh, you can probably take your, uh, your, your, your carry-on baggage avec vous, but other than that, William Riley, from moving through the windows, it looks like a lot of people getting off. Okay, well, you can see better than me. Can you see people walking through the, um, can you see people walking through their jet? Now, here comes the relief crew, methinks. So they will have deadheaded that crew across from Zurich. Hurry up, hurry up! <laughs> yeah! It's like little Jack Russell, those uh, Pratt and Whitney, isn't they, when they open up the thrusters. John Bacon's gifted a membership. John, thank you. Vulcan Lynn, good morning to you. No refueling going on. sit down man see all those see those big inboard flaps there the big um, barn door style ground spoilers come on mate hurry up look at your neck Lots of unhappy bunnies, but listen, whatever you do in a situation like that, don't go uh, giving negative feedback to Swiss Air. Uh, Russell Allen has gifted a membership. Thank you, Russell. Uh, they've obviously done their utmost. Uh, even the likes of Emirates or anyone, any major airline from around the world would, would be in the same boat. Uh, if, if you've got weather-related delays, you cannot do anything. Because literally one one delay just starts the backlog, doesn't it? And then it just, it escalates. It gets worse and worse. Barry Price, American pilots do love a wheelie. But we had, we definitely had that the egg. Newar, uh, Swiss A330 scheduled now for a 12.50 departure. Not a happy uh, bunch of people on that. Cheryl Howard just noticed the subscriber count has risen to 403,000. Yep. Well, you know what? I'd rather have 403,000 legitimate, homegrown aviation fan subscribers uh, than millions of people who just, maybe they, uh, a robotic or uh... I am not a human I have been bought to subscribe 
What is an aeroplane? No idea. Rohit Parkell, yeah. <laughs> Even the flag's a big plus. Steve Batty, can't help the weather, better safe than sorry. Yeah, absolutely, man. You know. Um, but even for us, you know, hardened fans of flying, it can become a bit monotonous when you're sitting on a seat for... I mean, it's, I, I think it'd probably be all right for the, um, for the folks in the lay-down seats, isn't it? Oh, right, well, I'll just grab another uh, couple of hours kit then. Because that's what they'll be doing at the moment, I would. I can tell you. Come on, hurry up! Swiss left its gate at 1.04 a.m. and departed at 3.49. God damn! So those, those, that crew would have been obviously contacting their base because obviously every, every aircraft um, is contactable uh, via the cockpit um, to their to their base, their centre. Um, if they have any uh, technical issues, uh, they can speak directly to the technical team, um, but also logistics as well for arranging special um, movements for passengers, etc., etc. But also now in this instance, um, getting a relief crew. I want to see if they see the pilots running across the tarmac now. It's not going to happen. I'm only, I'm only joking, of course. <laughs> It would be good though, wouldn't it? Could pick them up in a little in a little vehicle, wouldn't a vehicle? J Mank would see it as an extension of the holiday. Well, obviously there's uh, probably quite a few people on there. Go on, Sam, get it down. Who were, uh, who were supposed to be on connecting flights um, and who will now be even more delayed, unfortunately. Big hydraulic lines out the back there, see? See the actuators on the front as well, the gear tilt mechanism that we've talked about so many times. Uh, there's also gear, there's also actuator systems on the 777-300, not on the 200, which basically um, uh, 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 um, controls the undercarriage to minimise the chances of a tail strike. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Susie B, for God's sake, mate, let us know. Um, please let us know right before when he's literally on fire. And keep telling us as well. Uh, BA969, Susie B's son, isn't it? What did you say? Uh, yeah, we'll have a go, Susie. But you just need to make sure you let us know. Dan, BA38 landed after an engine failure yesterday, some flight number. Same flight number as the one that crash landed here in 2008. Flight number as in the 777 that crash landed here in 2008. I'm guessing that is. Um, wow, that's crazy, isn't it? Is that an unlucky flight number then? Um, so how far out were they when that, uh, when that engine failed?
Rekka my heart. Beautiful, beautiful livery, man. I do, I do like it. Oh, do like it. So uh, BA um, having a, an engine issue. Do we know the reg on that Dreamliner, Jilly? That uh, that was um, obviously it was inbound for Heathrow, wasn't it? And it just uh, the engine failed uh, on its way in. Wow. How far out was it when the engine failed? Anybody know? I need answers! Hannah Moise, or Moise, uh, Hannah, a very warm welcome back to you. A returning member here on Big Jet TV. Great to have you guys here with us today. Hope your week's going well. Didn't it go fast, eh? Wednesday already, flipping it. I tell you. Look at this, no reverses. Oh, here we go, look. Adam the Great 2009 had a flight to Australia with connecting flight in Hong Kong, but due to a storm over Hong Kong for, for my connecting flight, they delayed it by 16 hours. So just walked around the airport, blimey. How many laps did you do? I watch going mad. Full and free. Elevators. Elevator. Za. Next, maybe. I missed the elevators. Speedboats. All done, I think. NNS is a brand new member and right there in first class. Thank you, NNS. A very warm welcome to you. So many people say that, uh, you know. American fans. American Oh, uh, Lee Russell saying it was still over the North Sea when it squawked 7700. Over the North Sea. Okay. So it came down from over the top, did it? Um, okay. So that was uh, quite late in the day then that, it, uh, that the engine failed. Juliet Charlie is her name. Julia Charlie is a name. Ah, engine failure is a game. And there she is. Juliet Charlie, ladies and gentlemen. How's your engine, love? Oh, a little bit tender, but I'll be all right. That's it. Let's begin a little walk around the airport. You're right there, Sandra, on walking stick. Yeah, yeah. Got a little sling for the engine. Oh, bloody. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Bosh! wasn't that much of a problem if they can bring her down the gate already I guess it was do you know what's crazy man sometimes it's something as small as a like a, a two pound seal or something like that seriously um, because everything obviously has a has a part to play in the uh, in the engine and um, it could could quite easily have been something as simple as that um, or just you know whatever it could have been 
obviously nothing sort of like massively mechanically related in terms of like fan blades uh, in uh, you know core engine core related stuff or anything like that more than likely i would have thought it would be a, a, a sort of like you know a very simple I mean, even a seal, to be honest with you, a seal needs to, you know, that's a, that's almost a full strip down of an engine, unless it's one of the ancillary parts. May have been um, one of the hydraulic um, systems that failed, or um, uh, fuel nozzles, or fuel injectors, or um, whatever it may have been, obviously failed. Um, Who's to know? Who's to know? Difficult to, uh, it's always difficult to uh, speak. <laughs> Scott Heverington, KLM Business Lounge at Skippel, has Heineken on tap, helps it. Yeah, but there's only so much you can drink and only so much you can do at these, um, at these business lounges. I've been in a few, and to be honest with you, the one at Chicago is terrible. And the BA one. It's like a it's like a shed. It's horrendous. I'd sooner go and sit out in the um you know where where, where everybody goes, you know. At least you've got a geezer playing a piano out there. some triple sevens and three eighties landing next week on my first spotting trip to Heathrow. Wow. Make sure you do all your research, Matt. The day before, check what operations they're on. I hope they're on 27s for you. Should be able to see that now uh, if you look on your um, if you're on your weather app, whatever app you use, but you should be able to get some idea of what the weather's going to be doing next week. There's an example of like if you uh, if you're uh, a wildlife person and you love your sort of like sea life and all that and you go out and you see this herd of um, dolphins or whatever and one of them's got a white a distinctive white tip on its dorsal fin or something like that. It's the way sometimes to uh, uh, identify these uh, these these animals but uh, these jets sometimes also um, for a short period of time uh, like that um, A330 that just went out David Canard my wife was delayed on a BA flight from Kingston to Heathrow for eight hours last year it's so long, isn't it? Um, due to a failed light. They were on the plane the whole time. If they left, they couldn't get back on. A failed light. Well, that obviously must have been something related to the, to the aircraft's systems, but a failed light, where? Well, obviously not in the toilet or something, was it? You know. Um, Ian Barnes, good afternoon to you. Cheetah 1903, what is the satellite terminal or stand thing? Cheetah, you keep asking the same questions. I don't know what your question really is. What is the satellite terminal? This is a satellite terminal here. Um, and the stand thing. No idea what, what, he's, what he's asking there. Um, stand thing, be a little bit more... Um, Oh, listen to that. Oh, my goodness me. That's someone packing a punch. That's got to be a triple seven, isn't it? It is, and there it is. 200. Yeah, Peter, some lounges are not worth all the fuss but some are I kind of like being you know Such a thing as panna cotta cheesecake. 
Let me change my headset. Let me change my headset. Stand by. Copy. Ooh. I could do with a fresh one, but it's... Uh... Oh, cheater. Going to a satellite... Well, I didn't say a satellite stand. I said a... I would have said not a satellite stand, but a... A remote stand. A remote stand which is uh, somewhere where there isn't officially, it's not, well. Oh, okay. I said satellite stand. Sorry then if I did say that. Wow. I didn't say that. My apologies. Yeah. My apologies if I... Uh, My apologies if I if I made the wrong quote there. That that uh, it was the Air Canada jet, wasn't it, that was being uh, towed to a remote stand. Uh, I may have said satellite stand mistakenly, um, but a remote stand um, is that right there. These are all on remote stands. These aircraft here, where well, they're not official sort of stands. Although you could you could embark. Uh, right there, if you if, if if you needed to, but that is what is commonly known as a remote stand. And I'm, I'm guessing you probably already know that. <laughs> You're just probably asking, what's a satellite stand? Then? A satellite terminal is one that's separate from uh, out on its own. You know, although it is connected, that is a uh, that is uh, it's a bleeding walk. I tell you, um, it's not very it's not a very nice walk. Not if you've just landing at like seven in the morning or six in the morning or something like that it's crazy I can hear um, I can hear Trent sevens a uh, Trent eights sorry Chris Clark has gifted a membership thanks Chris and Gary Fellows has gifted five memberships thanks Gary great name you've got there Gary good mate good friend of mine Dave Fellows X bomber command um, rear turret. He's a gunner on the with four six zero squadron RAF Lancaster bombers. A hum. I'm wondering if it is that American jet all the way over there, man. You can hear the engines. Triple Seven Lenny. Love the mic test show on Monday. Neil, so the lounges that you have to pay to enter are not worth it. The ones that come as part of the high value tickets are definitely worth it. Uh, aren't they the same lounges though? I've never had to. I, I don't know of any lounges that you have to pay to get in or have the option of paying to get in. Thank you, Big Daddy. Well, can you? But they're the same lounges. Vinnie M, um, GVPRD, came in from Birmingham this morning. Very interesting. Oh, did you? G 
John Cooklin on the British Airways 737-400. And Captain Bob. Something's starting up. Oh, that's the tie triple. Tie triple pushing back, mate. Tie triple pushing back. That's what. That's what we can hear starting up. Nice. Yeah. didn't we do one in Vancouver? I don't know. Let's see her. Just about see the Thai jet. See her. Uh, she's starting up. Ross Tyrrell, if you think about the security issues involved, it makes sense to keep the passengers on the plane. Yes, exactly. That is precisely the reason why they do keep the passengers on the plane. Because let's face it, when they walk down that, uh, that bridge, that walk bridge there, once they're out into the lounge, they're literally, you know, they can wander around and probably um, sort of like, oh, you know. And then not, not only that, but when they're ready to go, if those passengers have sort of like wandered off somewhere and fallen asleep, then you're talking about even more delays. So that, that's the reason why. Somebody taking a ride on that one. And wouldn't you, eh? Wouldn't you? You just would, wouldn't you? Look how nice those engines are. a new member. Welcome Martin with a Y. Welcome sir. Enjoy your uh, the time here. Uh, who knows Martin Beston could end up still being here in four years time like we have so many um, long long range members. Long term long term. aircraft identification what's this folks don't look at your flight radar don't look at your flight radar what is that engines quite far spread apart relatively long undercase the nose kind of gives it away as well um, but the uh, but now you can see the wing tips coming in, into shot and see how uh, obviously not a triple seven because the triple seven's got those Massive, great big flaps on it. Also, the undercarriage on this aircraft type is sort of like it's it, it, it actually looks like it's angled forwards, but it isn't. It's actually, I'm sure they maybe made a mistake there. Oh, leave it out. Tie jet, tie jet going out, tie jet going out, GP. Taxiing right now. I think she's going to get a. Uh, she's going to go quick. Barry Price. Yeah, you've got it. A three fifty one thousand. Mitesh, nice landing. There we 
cargo. A lot of people um, have their different recognitions of, of aircraft type. Chaps. Thai Airways rolling. It's going to be blanked out by this. Uh, going to get very little bit of a. Get the climb out anyway. Can hear it going. Diesel 13 Egypt Air, triple seven, 15 minutes out. Yeah. Full chap, mate, full chap. Looking for it, looking for it. Left turn, Clyde. Beautiful. Happy travels. Safe travels. Have fun, enjoy, embrace. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, I watched that, um, I watched that show, uh, well, started watching, I watched part one of it anyway, of that, uh, that um, British Airways pilot thing. Have you seen that, Jilly? Have you seen that yet? It's a, it's a, it's a, um, it's a Sky documentary, I think. I think British Airways murderer or something like that. You know, the pilot murderer. He, mar he murdered his wife, didn't he? Um, but anyway, I haven't watched the second part yet, so I don't know what's going on, but apparently it's all controversial. But again, I've got to say, bloody editors, you know, or producers, or, 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 or researchers, again, supposed to be flying a 747, and what do they show the interior co cockpit view of? An A320. It's just, you can't make it up, mate. You know. I don't think British Airways are probably very happy with that uh, with that title. I've got to be honest with you. <laughs> Movie House, first time. Oh, there we go. Oh, side TV is it? Okay, there we go. Paul Fairclough. Dreamliner bendy wing business extraordinary. It is, isn't it? Um, well, it is actually quite amazing how all of these all of these wings flex up. Uh, here's one which you'll see 
Um, she's still, this is Air India, I think, is it? Yeah. Look at that wing flex, man. Now watch as she touches down and becomes a vehicle and not an airplane anymore as the wing deflexes. Watch this. Look at that, man. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It is a shame that we um, we miss we've missed so much in history, haven't we? Um, but uh, like um, Adam the Great saying, there it would have been pointless anyway because nobody had mobile phones then, did they? So. And or, or any kind of capability at all and there was no YouTube so uh, it would have had to have been um, now here we are at the side of the uh, airport in this lovely aeroplane with a like a cine camera or something taking Polaroid pictures quickly ripping them out the back of the Polaroid drying them with me hands Go on, son, light it up. Ten days or something? I don't know. Jilly knows more than I do because I, I just. <sighs> Andrew Hickingbottom loving the curve of the wing from the back view. Um, are we talking about the 380 there? Or are we talking about the, because uh, of course the, um, there is a definite sort of like, it seems that the wing starts lower on the Airbus and comes out, uh, which is, uh, and, and sort of like, um, I think that's the reason why there is uh, so visibly less flex on the on the Airbus than there is on the on the um, on the Boeing jet. sound through the surround sound system in his front room awesome man oh Andrew Hickingbottom he was talking about the 380 thank you Andrew yes it is an amazing thing isn't it um, and also uh, to note like I said the um, uh, 
the Airbus wing and the Boeing wing do definitely don't have really any similarities other than the fact that they're wings. <laughs> but um, Glynis Forrester has upgraded to first class. Thank you, Glynis. Lovely to see you. Thank you so much. Uh, Adam the Great, it's almost an impossibility. That's something that we would have loved. We would love to, t you know, um, uh, 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 tie, put, put, you know, um, to film a SpaceX launch, but uh, it's very rare that it goes on the day that it's supposed to go. They're already doing their... Uh, See, now the elevator's in the downward position. That's because the engines, the APU's running, but the engines uh, are not running yet, and therefore the hydraulic systems are not charged, um, which is um, why you're seeing that. Now, when they start the number one engine, all the systems will come to life, and the elevators will pick up into their neutral position. Um, you'll see that happen quite quickly. Uh, flaps are going to be extended. The um, the rudder will go to its neutral position as well. Sometimes the rudder, because of the winds, uh, because it's all loose and flappy, so to speak, uh, so as to not uh, put any strain on the um, on the on the on the connections. There they go, up to the neutral, into the neutral. Yeah, no, I've seen that. I've seen that. Yeah, 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 yeah. I've, 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 I've answered it. Yeah, just, just to say that it's, it's too unpredictable. We, you know, you know, there's always a massive window for launches, for rocket launches, and um, the chance of it happening when we're there. I would I'd put it this way: I wouldn't fly all the way there to, um, you know, waste everybody's money to go there, and it doesn't happen because of weather. You know, because that's obviously usually the reason why a lot of these space launches uh, rocket launches do not happen is due to weather conditions Forza lad Forza Ferrari he's uh, back as a member welcome back Forza lad hey up Forza lad Doink 380, 20 minutes out. Awesome, thank you. So who was it earlier that said about Cafe Pacific? That would be major news, wouldn't it? That'd be all over the that would be all over the Twitters and the um LinkedIn's and all that kind of like aviation pages and particular tug type there is a, um, a lift and grab or a grab and lift tug so the uh, undercarriage is elevated above the ground so that they can rather than having a tow hitch 
or beam fitted. This particular type will lift the aircraft and uh, transport it with the undercarriage elevated and um, clamped firmly into the vehicle. No pinky yet, Gary Lyon. Suffer 6-3. United have a... Uh, they still haven't put any United branding on that um, on that shed yet, which is a bit of a shame. Uh, Brian Stewart, there are a different uh, couple of different varieties of tug at Staines International. Kevin Jackson happy because it's going flying. Is that the uh, the triple seven there? Yeah. Um, it was the uh, the lady from American Airlines, wasn't it? She was an American Airlines triple uh, seven captain um, that we met at San Francisco, and I showed her the smile. I hope she. Hope she passes that on to to her um, to her flight crew friends and uh, husband and all that kind of stuff um, to say look at the smile because uh, look at that. I didn't notice that so Ray Dome uh, being worked on there by the looks of it good you know that. So that's the that's the crazy thing about that uh, that radar, folks. It, it weighs very little. Um, it's on hinges, and behind it is literally one thing, uh, probably a couple of other little bits and bobs. But um, the weather radar is right behind that nose, and obviously needs to uh, to have clarity, um, and therefore that's why it's at the front of the aircraft. John O'Godley, a first for him. It's going to be a first for a lot of people, I would imagine. It's a little bit of... Um, I think that 350 is probably feeling a little bit, you know... Um, uh, Paul Fairclough, who's had a flight on a DC-10. Well, I've had a flight on a DC-10. Continental back in the day. Los Angeles to London Gatwick. Have you ever flown on Ruby Slipper? Let's just jump back to this. Uh, is this is this Etihad? Looks like it. Isolation going on there. Ooh, easy. Sir. Nice.
the soda. Jimmy G61, bit hairy on approach. BA93 to Toronto shortly, Lloyd Bell saying, about to line up for departure. Could Jerry film the climb out? Got a relative on board. Oh, hold on a minute. Am I? Is that it going out now? Is that it? climb out for them. Aviation love. Yeah. VC10. I probably saw many VC10s when I was a young boy, but I never really appreciated it, unfortunately. Yeah. Pleasure, Lloyd. We're running some engines up somewhere. Oh, they are. He's running his engines up. That'll probably be on your flight radars, folks. That triple seven. Engine test. The one, the one, the things that I do remember when I was a kid, from when I was a kid, of course, were was the um, the air displays, you know, because you're there as for a specific reason. Um, I'm talking about when I was a kid and I was looking up at the sky and I was seeing planes at altitude. And I always used to look up and go, "Oh, I wonder if that's my dad."
Laura uh, involved in RT Quite fun. Tried to power up the engines twice before we had to clear the runway and wait to try again. There's two United jets there. Marco Fusco, uh, the diver, is um, due to go out in around about 10 minutes, we think. Diesel 13 Qatar 385 minutes out. Thank you, Diesel. start for the 767 over the other side flipping it see the 767 start behind him on his number one probably gonna have the same on his number two down the doctors okay let's uh to the uh, ground crew not to us yeah. is he uh, I can't see folks is his number two running Savage. Close to Daedalus, Daedalus Airfield, but with the Havilland Doves and Harold. Save it. Okay, now cough. <coughs> Coal fired 767 in Hannah. Brilliant. Stoke the boilers. There's another one, look. It's obviously quite common for these Pratt and Whitney engines to have a little bit of fuel left in the bottom of the. Um, combustor when they uh, ignite everything and it all fires up Sarah Louise Daniel Pearson did you see my shot on the 31st of March before my son flies out at 7.30 
Message us nearer the time, Daniel. See what we can do, my friend. Scott Everett. There's a lot of, um, there's actually quite a few, uh, Exhibits. Nathan P. Lloyd Bell, Smokey Joe, UBA 350, Bravo Sierra took first flight yesterday to Bast. Seriously. Schmidty 87, Esther L. Check like Jack Steph. Alan Shadbolt. Running on Astral R. Yeah. Uh, Nick Gray, that is not RB211, so it's Pratt and Whitney. Um, PW 4000's a variant of the 4000. Nathan P, I've got you. Qatar is um, going road, 27 left. Sam Tweedale, also Qatar 380 coming road. I don't think we'll have a shelter in place for uh, tornadoes here at Heathrow. Um, that's amazing. Columbus Airport have a shelter, a tornado shelter. Wow. Blimey, how many people can you get in that? Sydney from Kuala Lumpur. Yeah, again, that's something that you can't blame the airline for. Um, it's weather, isn't it? It's a weather related bumpy flight. Oh, Graham Label just left Austin, did it? Flying BS. Fox B. Not all of you 
US airports have tornado shelters. Yeah, well, it might be in areas where uh, it will only be in uh, airfields that are um, affected from those conditions. Kim Kinzer. Reason, uh, folks, if you're wondering why they've put that aircraft on the left hand runway, firstly, um, that 380, because it's Qatar, uh, Qatar operate out of the north terminal, which is over the other side that you can see beyond that 380 there, the other side of the runway. So it's more convenient for the airline in, in terms of taxiing, but also in terms of ground movements um, and in, 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 based on traffic movement, aircraft movements at the time, uh, there's always also a chance that, um, that it, it just works better for um for, for the um obviously it works better for the airline uh, and for the aircraft and for the pilots and for the passengers uh, just less taxi length um but also it um in some ways it works better for the for the um for the ground tower as well in terms of uh you know needing to navigate around the airfield with a 380 I didn't say to. Oh, fourth terminal four. Sorry, did I say north terminal? Oh, okay. Sorry. It's south to me, isn't it? Yeah. James McKelney, thank you. Paul Fairclough. Alan Shadbolt. to listen to that bit back to see where I made the mistake because I said they operate out of I, I must have said they operate out of the north terminal did I say that or did I okay they operate out of terminal four <laughs> God's sake Jerry man how many years have you been doing this son Rohit Parkell Jerry's geography is so good that Liège is in Germany. <laughs> I'll leave it out. Picking on me. Claire Bear, very funny. <laughs> Lewis Ryan, don't go to the airport with Jerry. <laughs> Oh, Swiss Air's been put back to 131, Mr. Wrighty saying. Oh, my God. Those poor people, man. Those poor people. Wow. I love a bit of banter here. I don't mind a bit of uh, slap and tickle humour and uh, a bit of banter. It's healthy. It's good for the soul. Paul Fairclough. Obviously watching from um, a little ways back, I'd imagine. Good day to you, Paul. Chad Hart.
I know, man. I know it's gotten better and better the more I've eaten it. <laughs> oh, you poor, poor passengers, man. You poor, poor passengers. Uh, Graham Laidlaw, we are actually going from Terminal 2, I think. We're going from Terminal 2 next week to um, with Singapore Airlines on the Singapore Slinger. Fuzzball hasn't had obviously uh, very good dealings with uh, with Qatar. Yeah, each to their own. Each to their own. There's a wing, very Airbus. See what I say about the uh, the wing of the Airbus being very um, sort of like um, bird of prey like in terms of the fact that it comes um, it, it's low at the at the at the centre point and um, and higher at the as it as it goes out. Look at that wing profile, man that kite. You there! That's a little bit close for comfort, isn't it? Watch it, son. Watch it. He may have seen that and uh, worn the tower. Birds on... Uh, at 100 feet or something like that, or 50 feet. Buzzards. Foxy bee. <laughs> He's had his nose done, look. He's out of surgery. Wake up, wake up. Come on. Gotta go to work. Still buzzards on approach. Birds on approach. Warning, warning. Seen, uh, not seen the fox recently, no. Brian Stewart, Ruby Slipper in the recovery room. Brilliant. I'm not a big fan of those hot flannels. You kind of want one, but then when you get it, you don't want it. Because <laughs> they're too flipping hot. I just use them for me, for me hands, actually. I don't use them on my face. You put them on your face. Ow! <laughs> yeah, but you get just get some, just take some face cream with you. Put some face cream on before you go, for God's sake. Rather than burning your skin off. Chester Draws has gifted a membership. Thank you very much, Chester Draws. And uh, Julio Rocha has been gifted that membership. Thank you. Uh, Suff 63, just to answer my own question, the A380 can only use or go up to Sierra 6, so I'm assuming the Qatar vacated there. Yeah, um, it will have done, um, because obviously it can't, they can't taxi down Sierra. Uh, they can use um, the Sierra taxiway, but only up to a certain point, I think, uh, where the um, cargo terminal exit is, something like that.
Oh, there we are, Julio Rocha saying thank you to uh, Chester Jaws. Isn't that nice? Good day to you, my friend. Get involved in the chat. If you're a recently gifted member, a new member, uh, a, a current member, you don't have to, of course. I know a lot of people uh, like to just sit back and watch the show um, and from time to time come in and uh, give a comment or uh, ask a question. Of course, um, we will, I will do my very best to uh, to answer as best I can, but also we have a very good uh, bunch of people on here who, uh, who are just as capable, if not more capable than me. Away with Annie. Didn't get a hot towel with Emirates last time. Blimey. Must have been a... Um, shortage of flannel uh, Joseph Dixon good day to you Wayne Dyer it's ADR of course Simon Knott uh, Simon Knott yeah yeah I've, I've mentioned that before that the um, that the um, the kite is actually uh, a scavenger it uh, it looks for well, you know, well, it's it, roadkill and stuff like that. It's crazy. But then that's that's why you see some so many of them um, at the side of the motorways, which is a terrible thing to see. Man. You know, uh, dead. You know, dead on the motorway. Shall I say. On the move. Good day. He's on the move. Mr. Alpaca, tuning in from Kingsford Smith, Sydney, Australia. Good day, mate. Um, obviously, uh, be lovely to. Uh, we've got some. We've got some calls to make. We've got a phone call to make. We've got a. Oh, is it okay? Matilda J. Oh, sorry about that. members are going to struggle and our members are going to struggle I know I know I know but yeah but I, I know yeah but America's going to be kind of along the same lines isn't it you know yeah, yeah. either way it's just Most definitely, yeah, 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 yeah. Simon Knox has shown Joe, but the reintroduction of the reintroduction is. Uh,
What a lovely start up that, that G90 is, isn't it? The heat coming out of that number one, man. Thank you, Joe. And on the great Nick Gray. Of course, if people are wondering what we're talking about with um, with Sydney, Australia, we're going to be down there in about 10 days, folks. It's our international show for March of this year. The longest haul show so far on Big Jet TV. And if you want to know where else we've been, get yourself a World Tour T-shirt. <laughs> Available now in the store. Expecting that. Uh, oh no, it's still been put back, hasn't it? Joseph Dixon, Steve Batty. Yeah, 20 years a good, good long time ago. The uh, the kites have been. Uh, I mean, I've been up this way for, for getting on for 15 years, and when I was before I came here, the kites were prominent everywhere. I remember when I went up to Yorkshire once and. Jilly and I were driving from one place to another and I said, blimey, not many kites around here, is there? And they came round the corner and there's this like swarm of them, literally unbelievable, man. Thank you, Freddie Laker, legend Freddie Laker has gifted a, a membership. Thank you so much. Yeah, they are, they are prominent, the kite, almost to the point of being pest pesty, if you know what I mean. But never ever would I agree to any sort of like you know cull or anything like that but uh, it is done um, they've had to do it in um, Richmond Park with the um, with the deer and also with the parakeets as well which is a terrible thing because they're lovely the parakeets they've got a lovely squeak really <laughs> yeah! Away with Annie. Pictures of me at a, on a racehorse at Botany Bay with planes coming into land behind. Amazing experience. Wow. Keeping an eye on the... Uh, I'm keeping an eye on the Swiss jet, folks. If you're wondering why we're keeping an eye on it, that aircraft um, was subject to a... Well, put it this way. It uh, left its gate in uh, Boston and didn't take off for two hours. Um, it was on the ground for two hours before it took off. Feather Duster, what a generous bunch. We are, we have a wonderful family uh, here on Big Jet TV. Very fortunate, Ops vehicle making its way out. Don't know what that's about. He may be doing some um, bird scare tactics here. He's got his, uh, his flare gun with him. <laughs> David Stevenson, thank you, David. I'm a little bit intrigued um, about that. Is that taxiway closed? Um, if so, it might be that it's going to be quite busy when uh, when departures are on this runway. Uh, that taxiway definitely looks closed to me.
and he said can you hear can you hear the thunder you better run you better take cover Adam the Great for those of you who don't know much about Heathrow so it's the biggest airport in the UK busiest airport in the UK of course next to London people do say Heathrow is in London Heathrow but it's next to okay it's actually uh, Heathrow is the name of Slow, isn't it? Depends on where you are actually. I think it crosses a couple of borders, doesn't it? It is it is a London um, you know territory, so to speak, I guess you would say. Another Swiss jet. I think um I think the uh Certainly down this way. Certainly down this way, the kite, the buzzard, the kite um, started out at High Wycombe, I think it was. Um, so just have a little look when this. This uh, 380 climbs out, which is going to be around about there, I imagine. So. Stuart Ross, that's what the um, it's a three. On his way round, as in, oh, he is. He's. I've got him. I've got him. Yes, yes, yes. Here he comes. Good lad. Good lad. Hello, mate. like that um, Air Canada jet's been washed at the back, doesn't it, look? In one key area. Beverly George, uh, Screaming Emu is with us. G'day. Uh, I eat very healthily. Um, trust me. Obviously, I'm not going to. I'm not going to um, order fish cakes and um, and beans and and and, and new potatoes uh, up on here, am I? Breaking out the. Well, you know what. It... No, no. Oh, 
caught on blur. Start frying up fish cakes and yeah. Quite a lot of um, rogue activity today, man. Vincent, get the bike membership, thank you Steve. <sighs> Stephen Billings, Qatar Cargo, triple seven two seven left, also WestJet 787. Blimey, what's going on? Remember that these pilots on the freighters do switch from uh, cargo to uh, to passenger jets, which is pretty cool, isn't it? Uh, Bradley Silverthorne, uh, BA38 engine has been fixed. We actually caught her being towed from the um, maintenance section down to gate. Uh, so whatever the issue was with the uh, with the Dreamliner, it's now been. Uh, it was obviously nothing too serious. May have even actually been nothing wrong with the engine, but a but a sensor, a faulty sensor in the engine that was giving um, you know readings that warranted them uh, shutting the engine down. Paul Weston giving a shout out to Steve for the gifted memberships. Oh, Pamela. Good day, Pamela. Hope you're well. <laughs> Cameraman's full of enthusiasm. Hey! I love planes and I can literally I think I think I think the um I could talk planes till the cows come home and then when the cows come home I'll probably still carry on. Look the hell
very warm welcome to you, sir. Caroline. Uh, Pamela, sorry. <laughs> From South Pamelina. <laughs> sorry about that. Left hand side. <laughs> Karen Gonzalez, yippee, I'm going to Australia with Big Jet TV. Come on, gotta be. Well, they've obviously missed. It is interesting, isn't it? That that goes to show how efficient the um, the. Con the contingency allowance for fuel is on these aeroplanes, especially on the long haul side. Uh, that aircraft, they've taken no fuel on from what I can see. Um, and um, she's flown all the way from Boston. She was two hours on the ground in Boston after she left gate. Um, and t yeah, two hours before she took off, uh, as a result of those um, those terrible conditions out there um, in Boston. I don't know if it was. Was it just Massachusetts? Oh, Stevenson. I hope some of the recipients can watch the Aussie stream. Yeah. Oh, it's a funny old um people who who are new when you see that tower it's got a bit of war of the worlds look about it hasn't it what are you looking at wow is it there's a, apparently there's a queue of 15 aircraft waiting to take off on 27 left and yet they're still bringing them in on 27 left. Uh, wow, well I think they've stopped now haven't they? Steve I'm sure they will, thank you Steve Vincent. Oh, it was Chicago, was it? Okay, my apologies. It was Chicago that aircraft came from, not Boston. My apologies. Uh, yeah, two two hours on the ground in Chicago. <laughs> Who is this bloke? <laughs> Say about that. Kuzro Alam. In my opinion, Heathrow has more airline variation than most, if not all other airports worldwide, particularly keeping the airline's geographical locations across the pond. Oh, Kuzro, that's great feedback. Well, yeah, we do have a great variety of aeroplanes here at London Heathrow, as we join me here. Uh, 104 in the afternoon. Hope you're well, folks.
Avro Arrow, I would have thought they'd be more there'd be more roads during inclement weather. Um, well, yeah. I mean, I'm wondering whether. <coughs> I mean, let's face it. Well, yeah. I mean, what, was it just Chicago that was affected by the tornado? Illinois, of course. That's Chicago, Illinois, not um, Massachusetts, Boston, Massachusetts. Um, it's Chicago, Illinois. But um, was it just Illinois that was affected by the? Uh... <laughs> no. Okay. So were there other were there other um, American airfields that were? And that being the case, it may be. Uh, it, it is a knock-on effect around the world, really, from around the world. Jules Harris has gifted five memberships. Thanks, Jules. Joseph Dixon, when will Jerry do membership chat only? Doing it right now, Joseph. estimated departure for Swiss Air. Welcome back, Carmen 2020. A retaining member. Howdy doody. Hello, what's that? Sketchy. I'm guessing that is an optical illusion, isn't it? And that that um, high ab is not right by that wing. Because you wouldn't want that thing uh, operating that close to a, um, a sensitive piece of equipment like that, uh, that, that Dreamliner wing. Gerwin Burt can't believe how quick the Aussie trips come along. How long are we in Australia? Is it a week? Okay, just under a week. Arrive on the Tuesday, leave on the Sunday. And we're obviously going to be... Um, we don't know timings or days yet, folks, because we need to get there, do a recce, make sure that we've, you know, we, we've got to speak to the, to, to the hotel um, over the next few days, really. thing is, to be perfectly honest with each other, it's probably something that we do when we get there and then speak to the GM. Because if you, if you, I've, I've had experiences before where I've phoned ahead uh, to the hotel and, and and they say, yeah, that's sure, Mr. Dyer, that's great. We'll uh, make sure that, you know, and you get there and you've got no idea what you're talking about because they haven't put any notes on the system or anything like that, um, like you would expect them to. But... Um, Amy. 
Chicago was rough last night. I saw storm with tops over 50 thousand feet. Wow. That's nuts, man. And that will rip your flipping wings off if you fly through that. Avoid that like a... Crosswind element, tiny little bit of a crosswind element. See how the ailerons, the outboard flight surfaces there, see how the ailerons become part of the braking system. Loving the engine close ups. Oh, Joseph Dixon, BA 107 to Dubai. Is that the one going out to? The one that they asked us to catch? Oh, is that no? They're just Joseph. I think. I think they're, they're, they're just. Uh, give, he's just giving me the uh, the the details on the flight that I just shot. Right. Okay. Radar 24, the Swiss 330 pushed back at 0104 UTC and took off at approximately 0349. So yes, close to three hours being, um, I don't know if it was taxiing, was it? Or was it, was it, I think they switched the engines off, didn't they? Uh, whilst it was out on the, uh, out on the field. So obviously, um, you know, await the storm to, uh, to pass through, I'm guessing. Pretty, pretty harrowing for the for the passengers. I mean, personally, I would have been, um, I'd have been like, yeah, wow, yeah. Pat bloke. warning us about the lag well it is what it is we've just got to get on with it um, he's saying there that uh, you'll wake up at five in the morning hungry <laughs> well that's what I do when I travel west as well you know always you know San Fran and I was like up at three in the morning got myself back to sleep Easy, son. Easy. Push. Clear to push and start.
Margot goal. Tuning in from Syracuse. We had a 3 3 2 from Detroit to uh, with engine failure uh, land around 7 30. They went out at 4 30 this morning and nearing Ireland. She's, is she gonna uh, is she gonna face us to start? I think she is, you know. Andy V, Captain Manny, good day. FedEx, the final frontier. Oh, Steph saying, I found adapting to Aussie time very easy. Trip is to stay awake until the evening, then you'll be fine the next. Well, that's pretty much par for the course, isn't it? It's difficult, though, man, because when you come back from America here, by sort of like four in the afternoon, you, you, you're hanging. Yep. FCE and you're right. APU just been shut down there. Did you see that? Let's get the hell out of here! Susan Shoja. I've taxied around Chicago a few hours waiting for a gate. Wow, I've decided to avoid all uh, whenever possible. <laughs> Seems when things go wrong there, they really go wrong. Um, I'm 
going to assume that they're going to get priority, these guys. <laughs> Make it work, whatever you do, it's not like, you know. Got a day to adjust, haven't we? Got a day to adjust, literally. Yeah, all we've got to do is get the Sims and, um, and do a recce or two, and then, uh, you know, but it should be relatively straightforward and Susan Whips will you be filming your flight to Sydney I think she probably means on board stuff yeah we'll 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 do some bits and bobs bits and bobs bits and bobs Australia is, is most of the time fine, but on return is a sod. Okay, well, it is what it is. Nothing we can do, is it? I don't believe it. Where's this rain? Where's this rain from? Then? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's, a, it's only a, sp a spit in the spot. Spit the dog. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, don't don't clock watch, man, when you're on a flight. And to be honest with you, um, it's probably a, a good idea to completely eliminate from your mind what's going on back home. And then, you know, in terms of the time, because you'll probably be a day a day out anyway, a day late and a dollar shy or whatever you call it. Captain Manny, Swiss time was running out. The hour was getting late. Smoke on the water. Fire in the sky. Thanks, mate. <laughs> London cabby. Oh, okay, so there's your pressures. Screaming Amy, 30 point, uh, 30 in Sydney. Uh, sorry, 30.01 in Sydney, 30.03 in London. I don't buy this air pressure theory. Yeah, Never heard of it. It's the first time I've ever heard of the air pressure theory. with these modern aeroplanes is that you know regardless of how high you fly altitude wise they keep the um, cabin altitude anywhere from sort of six to eight thousand feet is it uh, captains keep let me know I don't know but um, because of the clever way that the cabin pressure is controlled easy son Did someone say they were? Oh, nothing. 
Somebody say they wanted a, a, a BA jet to Dubai uh, filming, Jelly. I think that's it going out now, isn't it? Avro Arrow, after Sydney, Anchorage will be a short hop. Well, I've got to be honest with you, Avro Arrow, um, Anchorage is more or less bang on 24 hours door to door, isn't it? With all the stops and stuff that I do. I think every time. Yeah. Yeah, but door to door with all the bits and bobs. Royal Blue Ridge. If a, if, if a plane flies against the Earth's rotational spin, you would think it would get there in no time. I know it doesn't, says the plane actually. We're going back. Yeah, I can see what you're thinking, Rob. Um, oh, too much for me right now. Big bit of fod across the tip run where. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's following him, look. It's my it's my um shower cap again, isn't it? <laughs> Bonator douche! A Kudro Alam, newer aircraft, 6,000 feet, older aircraft, 8,000 in general. Thank you, Kujro. So I was seven points right, between six and eight. Very funny, Fred Glazer. Planes fly in the wrong direction down there. Got to turn the camera around. Drop if cabin altitude reaches 13 fares in feet. Yes, of course, because you can't even breathe. You start to feel um, the uh, hypoxia in it. Blah, blah, blah. Harry, not Potter, is a new member. Welcome, Harry. Great to see you. A very warm welcome to Big Jack TV. Hoppy, Sukara, Andy Pete. Jill Watkins, the issues that the winds tend to go in the same way. Yeah, there's all sorts of different uh, parameters of, uh, you know, when you're flying, wind speed, ground speed, indicated airspeed, uh, wind speeds against or, or, or with, you know, there's so many different. Um, I still ain't got the yellow. With the earth, yes, he's a very right there. So, uh, yeah, yeah, everything everything goes with the earth, doesn't it? This high winds down here on the ground that will still be, you know, um, effectively moving with the earth's rotation. Take care, Jules. Thank you very much for your gifted membership. All the very best. Um, I should maybe be back on later.
Cargo Lux 747 fan, Dallas, Australia. Good night. Karina enjoying 70 degrees in Vegas. All the hydraulic systems still not yet alive. As soon as the uh, the engines, I say, start, um, plural, and the reason I say plural, obviously, is because uh, these uh, Dreamliners have a, a dual start capability, uh, electrical start system, of course. Ooh, get it down, son, go on. Headwind element, uh, a crosswind element, sorry. So you see the left side flapper on there, well actually both flapper ons, uh, but as soon as they, as soon as the, the feed starts to the engines, the hydraulic system will uh, start charging, um, and then um, you will see the flapper ons and the elevators lift up into the neutral position. Process. Might not see it because you're just about to be photobombed by a Sri Lanka. There it goes, there it goes. Oh, slightly out of sync, but. Um... Tennessee. Got it, Susie B. Thank you. Make sure you remind us when it's on approach as well. Um, anybody who's got loved ones or uh, anyone on a flight, please make sure you uh, keep us posted as to the uh, whereabouts of the aeroplane. Rob Thomas is a new member. Welcome, Robbo. Lovely to see you. Thank you so much. Get involved in the chat if you want to, Rob. Has he got a... Uh... Elliot Reed, BA777 from Mumbai. We're following that. Blimey, those Swiss pilots are like, mate, come on, man. Come on, the, part, the passengers are like, I mean, what's the queue like? Flip it there, come on. Give us a break. Yeah, uh, Rohit Park out making a point. With no Wookie Howl from that uh, A220. Maybe did everything on the brakes, didn't even, maybe didn't even apply any reversal.
still waiting. Do 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 do. Still waiting. Flipping it. It's a BA so so I didn't, don't expect any. Uh, this is Eddie, this is uh, Emirates, isn't it? Yodu man. The king it is. It's a tiny increments on such a big giant aeroplane is amazing, isn't it? All going on with the movement of his wrist or her wrist. Simple as that. Crazy, isn't it? Wow. Idle. That's not often you see that, is it, with Emirates? Finally going. Noisy and all. Screamingly angry set of Trent 700s. Yeah, you can't bring you, you can't blame Chicago. You can't blame the airline, you can't blame anyone. It's just the weather, and it just happens. It just happens. Oh, look, she's light, mate. So the Swiss jet diverted. It was um, Chicago, originally Chicago, to Zurich. Um, and then as a result of the aircraft being on the ground for uh, too many hours, it's nothing to do with fuel, but to do with the, uh, the crew time, uh, the crew flying time. Uh, they ran out of hours, literally. It's a bit like a long distance lorry driver. Um, they've got, um, you know, they've got systems that record the amount of time that they're driving for. And if you go over that allotted time or come close to it, then you are, uh, you have to pull over and go to sleepy nan eyes. Obviously you can't do that in a plane. Although, um, interesting to see the crew rest area um, above the um the uh behind the flight deck there's a door and there's a set of steps leading up to a um a crew rest area i think it's for uh yt my flight back in december was delayed eight hours of the aircraft had been stuck elsewhere yeah it happens to me in fact 
it's funny you should say that Whitey well not funny but it's interesting that you should say that that aircraft was probably um, due to be used on another leg somewhere uh, today at some point and I'm guessing that there's been delays in the uh, Swiss Air system for long haul flights potentially as a result of that favourite current Lufthansa livery, even though I know they do have a new one. with Annie Air New Zealand crew let me go have a look at their rest area on a Dreamliner so showed me the controls for Windows favourite KLM in next there it is CFM power. Well, you don't know, do you? You just tell it now. Oh, mate, if I see a giant spider walking past me, I'm going to film it, mate. <laughs> Might even make friends with one. Pakistan International A320 crew idled only operating engine during go around after gear up touchdown. Oh, is this is this the um, is this the, the the result of the um, inquiry? Is it? Yeah, gear up touchdown. Do you remember at Karachi? Subsequently idled the only engine which was delivering power. Wow during the ill-fated attempt to execute a go-around. That's obviously the result of the inquiry. Okay, so the runway impact um, damaged the engine to the point where it couldn't um, 
Well, I mean, if the uh, the pilots. Were Go for full power up. Um, and it's not there, it only delivers 16%. And that's not their fault, is it? But um, obviously, can you imagine that? Coming into land, you've got no gear, you touch down, both engines wallop, smack the ground. I'm surprised that one engine even delivered um, uh, enough power. Oh look, it's a chichu, my chichu. Hello, my hello. Proper baby bus, innit? He's so little. <laughs> BA supervisor flees after running a three million pound immigration scam from Heathrow. Lip in it. Hope they catch the little sod. He has said to have helped passengers without the correct visas fly to Canada for a £25,000 fee. Blooming it. He's on the run in India, apparently, after being arrested over a £3 million immigration scam. He was reportedly running from Heathrow Airport. Sketchy, get it down, there we go. No pictures on the scorecard. He's sneakily cut. Now you know that that's why I think that taxiway is closed there, folks. Although that vehicle is um, is managing to drive past it on that taxiway, but I'm wondering if the if the taxiway is non-operational. There's obviously two taxiways uh, that side, but um, Yeah, yeah, unfortunately it is uh, quite rapidly becoming um, known as that, isn't it? Jordanian to open two new routes to UK cities. I'm guessing that's going to be either Manchester, Birmingham or uh, Royal Jordanian. Oh, London, Stansted and Manchester. There we go. Um, Royal Jordanian Airlines is to open two new services to the United Kingdom operated to London, Stansted and Manchester. Already serves London Heathrow with Boeing 787s.
Daily Mail. Getting on our, getting on our thing. How hard is it to land an airliner in crosswinds? I think. Inquiry after missing tool found inside a Qantas A380 engine. <laughs> well, it won't be very difficult to, uh, to, to work that back because they keep very strict records on maintenance. Qantas said it was taking the matter extremely seriously. Start up. The tool was found behind the fan blades of an engine on a Qantas 380. It was identified as a compressor turning tool and had been missing for nearly two months. How the hell has that managed to... I was, I was under the impression that at the end of every maintenance check and every use of tool, that the when you take the tools out, you have to put them, obviously put them back and account for them as well. A compressor turning tool. In other words, the tool, I think, that turns literally like a crank. Did I get what, GP? Yes, I think so. I hope so. Yes. Why? Oh my god. Oh my god. I hope I got it. Well, I hope so. Okay. I didn't get it. The answer is what happened if we got it or not. I mean, you see it down there. If no one tells me, then um, I need to be told. If it was missing for two months. The discovery was made after a routine inspection of the aircraft at Los Angeles. So it flew with the tool. I can't see how that works. No, highly unlikely, highly unlikely. Because obviously a compressor turning tool is a tool that's used to turn the compressor. But that's quite a, 
That's quite a gnarly tool, man. That's not some little, you know, eight mil spanner. That's uh, that's a big tool. So how could it still be sitting in the in the intake unless it's attached in some way? Maybe it's one of those ones they used on the old Rolls Royce Merlin engines, where you had a hand crank to turn the engine uh, if the um, if the starter system wasn't working. And maybe it was still attached. Even so, it'd be rattling around in there, wouldn't it? Jedi Master Joe. I was an avionics tech in the Navy. We had to have an inspector check our toolbox before and after we completed work on a piece of equipment. There you go. That's all I'm saying. I mean, you know, it's a bit like the jumbo that had a pair of step ladders still in it. Screaming Amy, have you seen me posters hanging around the MX hangar? Yeah. Okay. That isn't it, that isn't it that just landed, no? Okay. Well, Matthew Brown from the Australian, the, uh, the paper I'm guessing, the tool is a piece of plastic, flexible plastic. It did not have any effect on the engine's operation. Flexible piece of plastic. Turn the, rope, turn the whole engine with a piece of plastic. Ah, okay, thank you, Matthew. YT, yeah, that's what I'm thinking, you know. Um, this isn't it here landing now, is it, Julie? Obviously it wouldn't be in the engine, would it? Because it would just, it would just be sucked in there by the, uh, by the airflow. But even if it's inside the cowl, it can't be in the cowl, can it? It's, it? It is unfortunate sometimes these news reports do get very much sort of like blown out of all proportion. It may be something that's inside the spinner because all I can think is that a, a, you know, a cranking tool to turn the engine would be something. I know they turn the engine um, manually uh, when they take the spinner off. There is a tool that turns the engine that way. Other than that, I don't know. Jedi Master. And the shop would shut down if one was missing. There you go. So someone obviously, it's the next one, is it? Is it the next one, Julie? Is this it? Here, yeah. Okay. We're looking out for a, we're looking out for a light, are we? A phone light. Okay. Look out for a phone light, folks. Of anywhere, front, middle, back. Any idea, front, middle, back? Would help, wouldn't it? Oh, for God's sake. I need a little bit more help than that, don't I, you know? Sitting in the front, you know, uh, just over the wing, just in front of the wing, just past, 
We are on the way. Um, anyway. Uh, Jake, yeah. Um, there's been quite a lot of uh, instances where uh, objects have been left in the um, in, in in during either manufacturer or ma manufacturing uh, or assembly or during maintenance. Um, again, I remember a, a 747 that was delivered uh, dash eight that was delivered with a pair of step ladders in the fuel tank. Can you add them and eat? membership thank you Roddy and that was Bangkok Billy who was gifted the membership from Roddy thank you Bangkok uh, Roddy Bangkok Billy fishing move Mr. W I saw a light two planes back Nicholas Wolf RD UK Triple Seven Two Hundred American Airlines. Thank you, Jill. Take care, Jill Watkins. Thank you, Susie B. We had a go. Uh, we got into landing anyway. Neil Gay, uh, Guy, sorry, set applies left inside BA 757 flap housing for one month before mechanics retrieved it. Wow, on an A check. Press a turning tool. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Can you send that to me, Jilly? Scott Suva. Lost tool question mark. Ask my comms guys at Mountain Home Air Force Base about the 716th wrench they dropped in the cockpit of an F-111A. An air crew found it on the very next flight during a negative G manoeuvre. Someone got a rocket for that, mate. Wow. It's China Eastern, is it? Thank you, Sue. Love the uh, San Francisco show. A330 CEO. Trent 700s, easy son, come on, straighten her up, there we go, there we go, nicely done, there we go. Tip your toes, she's down.
Yes. Jimmy Back has gifted a membership. Thank you, Jimmy. Or it might be Jimmy Bark. I don't know. But Jimmy, thank you. And that is a vegan, a vegan techno who's been gifted that membership by Jimmy. Thank you so much, Jimmy. Oh my goodness, man. BBLLB, Chicago Turtle making announcements last night to seek shelter tornado near airport. Yeah, we've had some, uh, we've had a, um, a result of uh, that, those storms uh, around Chicago today at Heathrow with the Swiss Air jet that was um, on the taxiway for three hours. I think they shut the engines down. Uh, left gate at 104, went out at 349, something like that in the morning. Um, obviously, uh, no issues with the fuel contingencies, but obviously the, the pilots, the, the air crew, um, affected by their timeout, literally. Um, so, as a result of that, they had to divert here into London Heathrow and um, bring a relief crew in from uh, Zurich. Uh, to fly that 3.30 back on its final leg. Wow, screaming Amy saying they evacuated the tower. held everyone up, wasn't it? Evacuated the tower and left everybody to fend for themselves out on the airfield, blimey. Uh, Moira, the uh, Swiss jet has gone. Senseless, sense, senseless dusts, trains and planes. Uh, good day to you. Rigsby. Very funny. Captain Manny Carol Smith. God blimey, he got them quids, kids quick, didn't he? <laughs> Come on, hurry up, get in the car! <laughs> oh! That's that, uh, I bet you that's that United triple going out. Screaming its fan blades off. Yeah, 
again. All on the brakes. Oh, it was. Life with Dave. Something's firing up. It was, wasn't it? It was that United triple. Flat chat through the gate. Guessing that the Chicago Tower was evacuated for safety reasons, for flying debris in it. You know, potential for breaking glass. Oh, there are the collapse of links. Air left many passengers in the lurch last week. Susie B. Ian Morrison. By the looks of it, from what I'm seeing, it hasn't loaded because it's windmilling because you're on the phone. It's tiny. Yeah, yeah, just hang up and I'll, I'll give you a shout to call me back, yeah? I'll call you back, I'll call you back. Oh, flipping it, yeah, okay. Don't know if, is that plastic? You sure that's plastic? Didn't look very plastic to me. I mean, I know there are plastic turning... What's a 14, 15 mil? So it was a left attached then, is what we're saying here. Good looking jetliner. Yeah! That must have been left attached, that, um, that turning tool because there's no way that you could leave that in any part of any engine and it would still be there the next day or even five minutes later. Uh, from vibration, number one, engines do vibrate, you know, and they actually vibrate quite a lot. Um, not a lot of people know that, but they do actually, vi even modern ones, they do, they are susceptible to vibration. Um, there are even sensors that um, that record vibration on engines and I'm telling you now there's no way on earth that that tool that would have um, if it had been left in an engine um, space anywhere in an engine space that that would have um, that it would have not caused any damage because that going through uh, compressor blades would have made a right old mess of everything um, it may have, uh, it may have, if it was, if it was found in there, then uh, it must have been still attached to the, um, to the shaft, I'm imagining. Whoa, easy Sam, where are you going? 
he, he just waited for me, wouldn't he? <laughs> Flipping heck! That was close. Looking jet, that in it. Pratt and Whitney singing away. Yeah, they, they, they've, there's very little chance. I've got to be honest with you. Um, I can't think of anywhere in an engine, anywhere, where you would be able to leave anything loose, just lying there. Uh, it would either be, you know, very quickly, um, you know, if it was if it was in the um, in the back behind the um, the fan blades, it would be blown out of the engine, regardless of how big or small it was it would be blown out of the engine if it was um left in the um in the in the core of the engine it would destroy potentially destroy um um huge parts of that engine and the high pressure compressor blades um of course parts of it then would uh, be uh, splintered and go through the combustion chamber um and it would just be the end of the core of the engine or, 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 you know, potentially, uh, even a small piece of metal. You know, that's why these things are so sensitive. So there's no way that that tool um, has been left lying in an engine. It's been, it was attached to the engine. So someone's blown that out. Um, I mean, of course, I'm not in any way defending uh, a tool being left in an aircraft engine or attached to an, en uh, an aircraft engine. But the way that that red was like, oh, my God, there's a, a great big tool that's been left inside an engine. It's like, how does that work? You know, even if it was, you know, OK, um, somebody's not doing their job right, both the mechanic and also uh, the supervisor, the manager, making sure that there's, um, you know, uh, all tools are accounted for. You know, I mean, even the, even the, even, you know, the the, the, the weekend spanner guys like us who work on bikes and machines or whatever, you're always gonna, you're gonna always gonna check your toolbox for uh, to make sure that you know you've replaced or found or located the tool that uh, you were working with. Whatever. Avro Arrow, great sound on that Q8's trip, Q8 triples landing. Awesome. 
Can you hear the hum on those trents, man? Dying 78 DHL, third out. This guy's bringing their Dreamliner into town today. Aviation is, is a very sterile environment, it has to be said. You know, uh, airfields are a sterile environment um, and certainly um, maintenance hangars and, um, and engines are a very sterile environment. Bit like a, you know, bit like a, ho a hospital, really. Um, or, a, a, or an operating theatre. Uh, although, as as we have heard many, many times about um, scissors and sutures and things being left in people's bodies. Tony McCall Aircraft Maintenance Facility would could be compared to an operating theatre. Yes, definitely. No, it doesn't happen that often. Thankfully. YT, FOD prevention is an obsession. Yeah. Well, we've noticed when we've streamed up at, uh, at East Midlands, uh, before an aircraft comes into gate, it will, uh, or into stand, um, the FOD crew will go out and do FOD checks uh, of the stand around the aircraft area um, to make sure that there's no one um, there's no FOD that could be um, drawn up into the engines. <coughs> Dying. Here's an old banger, look. Needs a bit of spanner work done on it. Unless anyone have speculations on American Airlines aircraft order, they should be announcing Monday, BBLLB saying. Is this... Um, Oh, interesting, okay. River flame, okay. Long. Look at the old speed brakes, look. Like snow shovels, look. Quality old school, that is, man. A bit like the old baffles on the Concord. Ashley May got my two new big jet TV R. Oh, Ro road stickers, road Jerry off the post. Missing that one, Ashley. Not quite understanding. My apologies. Road outs. Top load telly, yes, talking about stick aviation. Gonna be playing out some stick aviation at some point on um, during the on-air shows. He does talk 
a good talk to Stig, knows his stuff, and he will tell you about um, um, tools and things like that being, you know, making sure that, you know, you have to, he's very, he's very descriptive on his stuff, is Stig. Manny, my A300, beautiful aeroplane, there we go. Of course the uh, A300 flying with FedEx, I think. They still fly the A300? And they do UPS. A350s or A220s is an American Airlines plane. Oh, bit of uh, controversy going on here. Are we talking, are we literally saying that on Monday or around about then, uh, there's going to be an, uh, an announcement with American Airlines as to whether they are going with um, uh, uh, Airbus or Boeing on their future um, orders? That's interesting because uh, I know that uh, the CEO of, of um, United took a trip over to Toulouse recently. I mean, without all the issues and all the problems that are going on that are befitting, you know, that, 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 that are happening with Boeing, um, the, 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 um, the order book, even though it's strong, much like Airbus, Huge delays, man. Blimey, I mean, they turned that Etihad 380 round quick, didn't they? Huge delays. But, 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 but we're only talking like, you know, like the A350 freighter. Um, they said there's, there's, there's a big delay. But it, instead of it being uh, the end of uh, 2025, it's now going to be the very early part of 2026. So we're not talking about years and years and years of delays. But um, apparently they've laid the first few pieces of the A350 freighter on the foul at the moment um, that it's I'm, I'm guessing that it uh, will it have its own final assembly line the, the 350 freighter or will they sort of like treat the two together and just build it in different segments you know um, because obviously that the entire fuselage the entire aircraft apart from the wings is a completely different setup in terms of its makeup you know um, the uh, the cabin floor, for example. You know the 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 the, the belly hold. You know um, uh, the freighter door. You know all those segments. Of course, it's a it's a it's a carbon aircraft as well. So it's all a one-piece fuselage, I believe, with the uh, with the A350. Unlike the 787, which is a you know a um, I think it's three or four pieces to the 787, which has to be then joined and bonded, fastened, and so on and so forth. Squopey is off to lurk for a while. I saw, uh, I'm guessing that's um, United, is it? Said he's uh, uh, American, looking at more 350s and 321s. More, what's, who's ISOM? Sorry, my apologies. Uh, ISOM is obviously a, one of the directors, one of the, the big wigs at, uh, at one of the American carriers. CEO of American Airlines. There we go. Um, yes, Craig, we're aware that uh, Korean are bringing their 747-8 Intercontinental um, 747 back to London Heathrow in June this year. 
Awesome. Jay Bacon misses the old Aer Lingus livery. Still see it from time to time. I used to love seeing their 330s and 757s. Never saw their 747s. Probably did when I was younger, but again, just didn't um, register with me. See, there's your new Lufthansa livery. Yeah, yeah. The crane is now not yellow. That is my, why they ever changed it from that to that is, uh, I just do not know, because that is my favorite Lufthansa livery. And um, I'm not sure, they they were obviously going through a huge livery change throughout their fleet, but um, whether that's continuing or what, I don't know. Obviously, they, they're not able to um, repaint their aircraft until they've got enough time to do it and they can allocate the time for it when it's perhaps doing D checks or or off the um, off the cards for quite a considerable amount of time because you're talking about well best part of what a week or so to, to prepare and uh, and paint that aircraft Life with Dave, do aircraft use wheel brakes when landing or just reverses? Uh, Life with Dave, great question. I love it when people ask questions like that. Um, obviously, a lot of people know and a lot of people don't know. But basically, they will use three different systems. They will use the, the wheel brakes. Uh, they will use the ground spoilers as well, uh, which are over the wing. And um, they will also use the engine reverses. Sometimes the engine reverses are opened and it is just literally idle uh, thrust that comes out of the engines, although um, idle thrust uh, on these modern jets is, is still quite powerful. And uh, even though they just open them up, don't actually exert any pressure. Stansted and Manchester, the latest uh, announcement for these guys at Royal Jordanian. Way -a. So there's your reverses. those boards just going down now they are the ground spoilers um, and speed brakes as well they've got two different sort of like uses uh, they also use them during flight uh, when I say during flight mainly on approach um, especially in, 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 in gusty conditions you'll see uh, you'll see the speed brakes uh, uh, lifting ever so slightly um, almost not so much to slow the aircraft down uh, you can slow the aircraft down on approach if you need to um, uh, decrease speed on approach um, when the tower may maybe ask you to um, drop your speed to so and so and so and so um, but um, we've got to start up but those uh, ground spoilers oh, it's Egypt here Okay, Brian Stewart, a deal for Airbus 321 and Boeing 737 MAX 8 jets could be announced as early as next week. I'm guessing that's American. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'd imagine that um, Boeing will be like, man, come on, we, we're, you know, we can assure you. Uh... It was a bit of a, a it was a bit of a cringy sort of announcement that uh, the CEO of Boeing 
made at uh, Singapore. The 737 this is the safest aircraft in the sky. Why do you even have to say that? There's no air, no airframer that makes that kind of announcement there. Why would you even be doubting it? Suffer 1663 saying that the CEO of United has been on media saying that they no longer have plans for the MAX 10. He was in discussions with Airbus a few days after the Alaskan incident. That is that is the um, that is the visit that he made, wasn't it, to um, to uh, to Toulouse? Not long after we were down there, I think it was. Alabama man, Craig Russell, uh, British Airways trip seven two hundred ER, Craig, uh, from Frankfurt. Uh, oh, Craig, three twenty Neo. Oh, that was that one. Sorry. My, miles behind in the comments, folks. I do apologise. See, son. There we go. Captain Manny, I missed the Finnair MD11 livery. Randy Bushbound, for 321 over 737, 800. Uh, I look only and the seats are wider due to the price. Oh, 777 firing up in the test bay with British Airways. That'll probably be on your flight radars. You can hear it screaming. Toronto show, Mark. Oh, easy, son. Hey, hey, here come the reverses. And, uh, Screaming Emu actually brought this to our uh, attention. That those big inboard um, panels that you see there um, above the undercarriage on the wing there. That 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 particular board has a specific uh, reason for it being positioned where it is, and that is to deliver the maximum amount of downward pressure on the braking system uh, to maximise braking. Boy, oh boy, does that smell of, of rubber. Claire Bear has gifted a membership. Thank you, Claire. Jez White, there's an 80-year-old Mustang flying over Royston. Is that Royston Vasey? Bobble hat, Ashley May saying. Big Jet TV bobble hat. They are good. I've got one on today. I think I'd need it. Good job, I kept in the van. I did. Oh, okay. Jerry, uh, Suffer 63. Jerry, the issue is that Airbus is getting orders, but supply chain issues while Boeing gets orders, but also quality issues, and that is the killer. Well, not just quality issues, Suffer 63, uh, as it was, uh, or, or, or should I say, not really quality issues anymore, is it? Because they're kind of dealing with that. 
but everyone has supply chain issues. It's not just Boeing, because remember that Boeing and uh, Boeing Airbus actually uses uh, um, Spirit Aero as well as Boeing, as well as other air framers as well. Um, I don't think Spirit do as much for Airbus as they do for Boeing in, in, in terms of like full fusel fuselages. But um, certainly around the world, there's no um, big plume of uh, black soot coming out of those inboard engines, man, as the, as the auto systems speed the aircraft up. Even the pilot at, the, at this point in time manipulating the throttles, um, he or she has... Uh, has um, left hand or right hand on the on the on the steering unit um, and uh, the other hand on the throttles just to keep everything trimmed nicely for the descent coming into 70 60 40 30 20 10 retard Bosh. oh wow how smooth was that Look at the boards on that thing, man. Of course, the, uh, the auto system kicks in around about 2,500 feet. Well, on the Boeing, it does anyway. Um, for the descent into any airport, um, that's the call-out signal, 2,500. Um, and then it will call out at different increments. And then, of course, as we know, um, it will call out minimums. And then... Uh, from the 100. Yeah, please don't, um, please don't um, stop asking questions, man. Uh, just keep the questions coming if you want, folks. If I miss it, I apologise. Obviously, I'm uh, having to keep my eyes peeled across the airfield here, as well as the, the monitor on the camera, making sure I've got you guys entertained, while also uh, looking to my right and glancing at the comments. Miles behind on. Uh, if you're regular at Big Jet TV, you'll know that. Oh, blimey, have I missed a load of um, members and all that? Nanato. Nanato is a, well, is a, is a new member. Uh, Air Action 2257's gifted five memberships. Uh, Steve Parker has gifted five memberships. Thank you, everybody. It's a very wonderful and generous thing to do. Thank you so much. Um, let's just take it from the top. We've got... Okay, I'm up to date, I think. Thank you for... BBLLB has he gifted. Yeah, I've got that. Barbara Sina has gifted five memberships as well. Did you say BBLLB as well, Jilly? I didn't see that. Okay, I missed that one. Okay, okay. BBLLB has gifted a membership as well. Thank you, sir. Hope you're doing well. Got a lot of, um, got quite a few pilots on our books, folks. Uh, some who remain anonymous, uh, and understandably so, um, and some who are open to, uh, to questions and are very active on our stream here, um, which is wonderful to have these guys aboard. Just maybe, it's, it's, it's crazy, man. Uh, Leanne Nois is a new member. Is that right, Nois or Nois? Uh, good day to you, Leanne. Hope you're doing well. Thank you very much indeed. A very warm welcome to Big Jet TV. BBLLP saying, I remember that from the 190s, something out of green dot. Was that the, uh, oh, the green dot? I remember that with Zane Dunning on the Dreamliner, the green dot. Was that on the, um, 
that that's on the, the, the display, isn't it? On the um, artificial horizon, I think. He's a new member. Welcome, Tony. Oh, Jill, you shouldn't do that. Don't kill spiders, man. You shouldn't kill spiders. Just catch them humanely and wish them out the window, man. It's not good to kill spiders. LLB 737 has a green banana. <laughs> Brilliant. Was it on the um, was it on the artificial horizon? Of which there are two digital and one analog, I think. I'll go past the 747 box on my way back. Somebody saying that they haven't received their sticker yet. Um, I, I'm not there every day, folks, because it's it's not round the corner from me. Um, so uh, I will make a point of going to the um, the PO box after this and make sure that I get the latest batch of stickers out. If you want a free sticker, uh, just download the app, folks. There's no money involved in it at all other than the self-addressed envelope that you need to send uh, to claim your free sticker. Um, and thank you for all the people who send lovely notes in the, in, in the envelopes. I'm, I, I, don't, I don't expect it, trust me. I do not expect it, but I just want you to know that I appreciate it. Uh, very much so and I read all of your letters and I read all of your emails and um, you know uh, too many to reply to unfortunately um, but thank you so much really do appreciate all the little things that you send through um, it's it's much appreciated Claire H is a brand new member welcome Claire hope you're well that tail is on that A380. Now you can see why all the operators needed to uh, extend the height of their their hangars um, to accommodate the A380 and you can see that Virgin did it uh, in anticipation of the 380. Obviously uh, it was never needed but they still needed to just pull those shutters up uh, a little bit to get the 747 in there and now of course I think even maybe the 350 does need a little bit of a notch or two up on it but yeah we don't we don't get any hate mail folks we don't get any hate mail none at all never had it in all the years that we've been running it never had it Apart from the odd um, numb skull who comes on the ch on, on the chat, who gets booted out um, before they even get a chance, to be honest with you. FGWS, what to say, Mike? Mike, do pilots who work for carriers such as Lufthansa fly both passenger and cargo jets? Good question, that Mike. Um, the answer to that is I believe yes, uh, as, as long as they're tight rated. Although, um, as far as I'm aware, um, Lufthansa uh, don't operate seven, uh, 777 passenger jets, um, but they would be um, uh, uh, tight rated on the 787. So yes, um, we were talking about earlier on about the Qatar um, 
pilots. Um, there was a Qatar 777-200 freighter that came in earlier. And yes, those pilots will get the option of flying both uh, passenger and freighter jets. How many airports brand and Rab asking? How many airports around the world uh, have hangers for the A380s? North and South America have only one and it's LAX, yes. Uh, Manila is the major um, uh, maintenance station for, um, for the A380. Um, Lufthansa Technik um, operate the um, a, a maintenance facility out in Manila, uh, not just for Lufthansa, but also for other carriers as well. Lufthansa have actually just carried out the first 12 year um, full D-check on the A380. Um, Emirates, of course, have their own maintenance facilities. Um, of course, Frankfurt, um, and I'm not sure where else, to be honest with you. Uh, I think we have special livery. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of this livery, I've got to be honest with you. It's a bit like crayons, isn't it? It's like giving it to a five-year-old and... Uh, Screaming Emu's gifted a membership. Thank you, Screaming Emu. As has Dustin Jackson and Nick Gray both. Um, thank you very much indeed. Really appreciate it, guys. Oh yeah, they're, they're the only people that get involved in any kind of hate, um, it, which is a terrible word, is it? It's a nasty word, hate. Anyway, um, are the people who are um, failures in life, I have to say. They're failures, simple as that. Uh, haven't succeeded in any way, probably got no mates. Or friends, should I say. Um, frustrated with life, just not being able to succeed. And they literally help, yeah, yeah they hate themselves. Um, and so they just can't help it. It's funny, you know, it's, it's, um, it's funny. There was a fella this morning being interviewed on TV and he was a, he was a prolific uh, hater on, on the channel um, to do with uh, females being involved with football, blah, blah, blah. And the stuff that he wrote was disgusting. But the BBC managed to sit down with him and interview him. And uh, the, the answers that he gave were just really ridiculous. Oh, it's a bit of a laugh. I see it as a bit of a laugh. Why can't they laugh? And she said, OK, so would you feel a little bit different or a little bit more vulnerable if your face and your identity was shown on these social media channels? What did he say? Well, I wouldn't do it then, would I? Thank you. Thank you. You s cowardly, small-minded little person who has no life, literally. Get out and enjoy life, man. Stop hiding behind computer screens and writing crap about things, you know. Just enjoy life, man. You're only here for a short period of time. Why be all wound up and twisted um, just for simple things, man? Nobody supports you as well. All your, all your other haters, they probably hate you and all, man. You know, seriously. Find some love in your life, man. Get a cat or something. Oh, 
speed brakes now. Sort of like somebody didn't wake them up on the way down. That was what it was. That was what it was about. And all the time that these uh, these social media channels allow these things to happen, we're never going to get anywhere, are we? We're never going to get anywhere. So the best thing to do is ignore all that lot. Um, wish them well. Tell them to sod off and enjoy your life. It's been cleaned, isn't it? He's got clean. Look, it's definitely been cleaned, that thing. It's had a wash. <laughs> oh, look. Someone's lining up for a departure. Go, folks, who wants some uh, departures? Get a rat instead. No, poor ratty. Get a flea. Get a pet flea. <laughs> Melanie had a similar rant at a 13 year old yesterday. Of the class thanked me. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I mean, it's, as long as it's as it's handled, you know, in the right way, is nothing that any that student can do, is there? You know, they can't go running to his mummy or her mummy, can they? You know, because hopefully the the parent will be. Um... Oh man, he wouldn't want me being a teacher. <laughs> oh no, I would probably be fired within three days. You can't talk to them like that. No, I'm talking about the parents. <laughs> Waiting for them outside the school class. Hey! <laughs> deliver a bit of, uh, of their own medicine upon themselves. Like I said, you know. God, it's always been good, isn't it? At least, they, uh, at least they're face to face, aren't they? Uh, Nick Hulse has gifted a membership. Thank you, Nick. It's very kind of you. No, 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 no. What I'm saying is that at least they've, you know, um, you know yeah, they're, they're weak small-minded little idiots as well um, who need a good uh, a good bit of their own medicine blah 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 whatever um, but um, yeah away with Annie really glad he's never done a go around but I'd love to I'm the only person who enjoys turbulence oh I don't know Annie I think you're uh, fine that there's quite a few people here who wouldn't mind um, who don't mind a little bit of a, an un unsettled landing <laughs> Welcome, Martin. 
He's a brand new member. Well, Mike, it actually started with um, with aviation, uh, the, uh, the, the, the the whole business with Big Jet TV and the stickers, didn't it? It all started with that. With somebody mentioning. Yeah. Okay, first off is a Land Rover. Takeoff thrust set. 40 knots. Gonna need to go a bit faster, sir. All right, okay. <laughs> I think we're gonna have to abort this one, sir. No, just keep going. Keep going. <laughs> God, yeah, if I was a geography teacher. Right! Anyone know where Guatemala is? Good, because I don't. <laughs> right, come up here and draw a map on the drawing board for me. Let's just uh, look at <laughs> Screaming Emu, I watched Massport do a runway inspection at like 110 mile an hour yesterday. We drove at God knows how fast and speed behind an A320 live on Big Jet TV at um, Munich. If you don't believe me, it's there on our, on our channel. I don't know what we got up to, but this poor little ops car was like, I can't go any far. I should have. Oh yeah. Literally, as he pulled out and was rolling, we flat, the geezer went flat out. It was brilliant, man. Some airport people are just great people, aren't they? He's a drive, rides round and round the airport, folks. Look at him, look. I know you're going faster, mate. You don't have to pedal even faster just because I'm filming you. Um, but no, uh, big shout out to all those those guys. They they drop, they ride round and round the airport um, to you know to to give assistance to anybody who might be in need of a you know a, a medical emergency or something like that. times do I have to tell you? I mean, how long have you been doing this? Oh, sorry, mate. Yeah, well, you know, come on, fella. Pull your finger out, son. Martin Hayes is a new member. Welcome, Martin. Hales, sorry, Martin Hales. Lift off. What's that? We don't even know what it was. The Paul de Laos. Uh, isn't that Vietnam? Isn't that. Um, that's Vietnam. Isn't that North Vietnam? I mean, I'll go for the Vietnam War.
screaming at you right across from JetBlue's gate, yeah? There really is no better startup sound, is there, folks? Glenn's Aviation Love, I loved flying on the Air Canada 777, so quiet in the air. G9 is awesome sound, food that was a lot to, a lot to desire. There we go. Away with Annie, we are on departures. Daniel Burns, maybe Jerry can teach anger. car alarms off this one. long this thing takes for the gear to go up three seconds after the wheels off ground nice bit of brake dust from the wheels stopping there about 12 to 14 seconds uh, the Airbus have uh, cleverly um, created um, revised system for the uh, for the undercarriage on the A330 Neo which will probably I'd imagine some of its technology be carried over to the CEO um, for uh, for quicker gear retraction. Sam Wilson, thank you. Next departure, BA398 to Brussels. Rachel Van Zeller cranked it up to max. Split scimitar. Golden Girl is one of the two retirements later this year. Was that Golden Girl that just went out? We might get a little bit of uh, floofage here, man. Horatio McSherry, I do love the 330s with the exhaust mixtures. They look fantastic. Nice, on the Trent 700s that is, I'm guessing. Harry Rundell always deliver quality poetry. Thank you, Harry. I do try. Oh, nicky, 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 So it'd be interesting to see what American Airlines um, are planning and United in terms of their uh, Airbus versus Boeing orders. You know, I, I, I've got to be honest with you, I'm not a fan of either, folks, Boeing or Airbus, um, because I've flown on all types. Um, and I want to see Boeing continue as a successful air framer. Um, to the point where they come back and um, really challenge Airbus. I can't be doing it at the moment, you know, but, but with all the problems that they've been having, 
I'd like to see them back um, to full strength again. Whether that's ever going to happen, I don't know, um, because I think it personally, I think it needs a big uh, re jig of um, management. This one. Still a little bit of uh, a little bit of drift going on there. Look, see, she's facing left, but she's actually flying straight. Here we go, winding up the big ones. fun of the diddle fella. This aircraft takes to rotate. Long run on the Dreamliner. I'll probably go up earlier. So. Look how much further it takes than the, than the 777. Literally using almost all the runway there, man. Let's see if he gets gear up. So kicking that sideways. A little bit of uh, input. Um, the ailerons. Ooh. Oh! Yeah! Come on, sir! You love it when they unleash all that power, man. Now for the Trents. Okay, here we go. Qatar. Oh! Qatar behind him. Oh my God, listen to this. As they lift off, bang, there it is, she's an aeroplane. 
rudder stays straight. Now it's all about ailerons, flapperons, high and low speed ailerons. Get that gear up nice and quick. Give her a smooth climb out. And she's flying. She is flying. Yeah. Beautiful. So this one. Oh, hello! Intersecting departure for a 777-300. Where's this one going to be? Oh, wind it up, son. Go to LAX. Yeah, but that, yeah, but that BA with it up close like that was just phenomenal, man. It was phenomenal, mate. Yeah, of course it did. It didn't go off as the plane was like, oh, well, whatever. Okay, here's another one. did get a wizard. We got everything there, didn't we? Hello. 
low this is to the ground. Yeah, look at that wing flap. Just crazy. Watch for the elevators. Here we go. Isn't it crazy how it's just the slightest pull up, just the slightest movement to get the aircraft flying? Because it wants to fly. All you need is speed. Literally, the right speed, and then uh, she flies. And that's all information that's inputted into the flight management computer. Oh, here we go, XWBs. Nice brake dust. in the air. Everywhere I look around. Gilles Riviere loves the 350. Avro Arrow, can Staines International get their hands on the Tavon 318? I'm sure we can. Nick Gray, low pressure air which causes condensation of the moisture in the air. low pressure over the wing, high pressure pushing it up and those uh, water molecules literally condensing, even you know, squeezing together to create that clouding. There we go, screaming Amy, low pressure will literally pull the invisible moisture from the air condense it and make it visible which is great happens on approach and on departure And it's there when I look in your eyes. That ain't bad.
the undercarriage doors are the last two digits of the registration number of the aircraft. So this is uh, Papa Romeo, always on the um, vertical stabiliser, as well as, of course, um, on the undercarriage doors. Again, don't don't get me wrong, folks. I don't have a preference, but just visually, it just appears that the the the, the, the Neo, uh, the, the A320 has a, a much more sort of like nimble feel of feel to it than the uh, than the 737, doesn't it? 737 is a little bit more hardcore, isn't it? A bit more brutish. So it looks to me as though they are completely dismantling that whole area up there, I believe. From what I'm seeing, so I think Virgin Atlantic are possibly going to take that, uh, take that slot. Unless BA have bought it out or um, bags it it. looking machine Oh, that's a good point. John HBA did give up their hangar. United took it. Yeah, actually, it makes you think. Um, well, maybe the reason why Virgin didn't take up that hangar was because uh, they already knew that the fire training station was going to become um, defunct. Um, and therefore uh, took the option of utilising the space next to it. James Kelly can really see the bypass ratio in that shot. Oh, we're talking about the uh, the, the, the the big, um, yeah, huge uh, ultra bypass ratio turbo fans, Pratt and Whitney PW1200s or. Um, or the um, the leap one A's and B's. Captain Manny, thank you, Captain. He's gifted five memberships. Most kind of you, sir. Thank you very much indeed. Flying bedstead. <laughs> Bypass, folks. What we mean there 
is the amount of air that bypasses the core of the engine versus the amount of air that is ingested into the engine and used as jet thrust as in um, you know um, the, the, the the majority of the thrust the forward thrust motion of the aircraft nowadays on these new jets is um, and it has been for some time um, but it's just gotten bigger and bigger uh, in terms of the um, the forward energy uh, of the aircraft is by the fan the forward fan blades themselves rather than the the jet thrust oh Ian that would be a wonderful thing wouldn't it Not gonna Avril Arrow. I don't know if they are going to actually. Um, they will need some kind of a fire training um, apparatus, won't they? Um, I don't know what they're going to do. Maybe they are going to put a new uh, a new one in there. are seeing is a high bypass ultra high bypass turbofan around 70% of the air that is ingested uh, bypasses the core of the engine and is used as forward thrust Shame they've uh, that v Virgin 350 is that is where it is. Say, uh, you say you'd love to see the um, the, the look on um, Sir Frank Whittle's face today. Mind you, Frank Whittle wouldn't be that uh, uh, um, surprised because it's jet engines, isn't it? I think the biggest surprise would be on the... Um, the Wright brothers, yeah. Um, mind you, you have to you have to wonder, don't you? That uh, back in the day, back in the day of the Wright brothers, uh, can you imagine the uh, the look on the face of people uh, when they see an aeroplane fly, a, a machine flying for the first time? Um, what an experience that would be!
but I know what you mean. I seem to think that Sir Frank Whipple would have been... Well, because he created the jet engine, didn't he? Um, he didn't... He didn't uh, it was later that the bypass technology was created uh, for jet engines. Thank you, Sam Wilson, for the updates. Ellings 3-8 Whiskey to Shannon. Thank you, Sam. Sarah Faro. Thank you. Just popping in from the Lurkers Lounge. Cell on that 320 Neo. Thank you, Ram Tracks. Now you can see the bypass. You see right the way through those engines, man. I think he's starting his. Uh, Airboss, good day to you. Happy hump day. Oh, okay. longer folks Remember when I turned up at that that um, that? Uh, she's ready to go, mate. She's ready to go. That Ford Breakers yard, not Ford, and um, Boeing. And I rolled round the corner, and there was that boat. They did an overhead shot of it. Um, is that Natalie G? Natalie G. Natalie G is a brand new member. Welcome, Natalie. <laughs> Excuse me. Okay, 
folks this is your call out shot thank you to everybody who's been with us today it has been another great show and another um, wonderful time to share with all of you aviation fans from around the world of course we will be back on Friday for the on-air show yeah I haven't even got my head around that one yet do south love the 350s flew in the right seat Everybody. Thank you again for all those who've gifted. Welcome to all our new members. Uh, welcome to all our new subscribers. Um, thank you for subscribing to the channel. Um, and also, don't forget, you can download the app as well. Follow us on Twitter. I'm on LinkedIn. Um, and uh, we, are, uh, we are obviously contactable if you need to contact us. And... Um, yeah, we put out posts and um, notifications on the on, on Twitter and uh, of course on our channels, and uh, that's where you can get most of your information from. Show updates and so on and so forth. Um, but yeah, it's been another great month. Thank you, everybody. Look after yourselves. Got a bit of a runway inspection going on at the moment, but yeah, I'll take that. Thank you, everybody look after yourselves and uh, be good and be nice to everybody be nice be happy hey look look at my bobble lap um but anyway we'll see you later thanks jilly by the way i think darren was here today and maybe trish as well but uh, thank you to everybody who's helped us out as well um love you all folks look after yourselves be good and thank you once again and we'll see you on friday cheers bye bye